What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are taking a look at some very cool Town Hall 13 attacks, and these are using some of the new things added to the game in the last couple updates. Uh, we have the invisibility spell being used for these invisible queen charges, which I'm a big fan of. Um, also some other uses of the invisibility spell, and the super minion paired up with dragons, all great stuff. Um, wanted to make sure to share some of these cool things at our top town hall level here. Take a look. Um, you can see starts off with the invisibility spell, using it to um, take any fire off the queen. Also helps protect the healers a little bit because one of the healers there uh, was taking a little bit of damage from the air defense. Goes ahead and freezes the single inferno, drops down a rage. Notice there's only three healers being used on this charge. So typically you're going to have five healers. This only uses three, so you can sacrifice a little bit of um, spell space in order to save some troop space. Once again, you're going to see another invisibility spell used, I believe, in just a moment. First a freeze, um, make sure things actually pull out to the queen. And then we're going to have one more invisibility to help the queen, especially with those headhunters. A big uh, usage of it is to protect the queen um, from headhunters because they will start to target something else and as they run by her she can pick them off. So worked out nicely, great timing. Use the king to kind of help tank a little bit. Um, this is kind of like a semi Sui hero type thing where you know king, queen, royal champion all being used here to uh, get in there, get some good value to set up this Lalo. Um, but it is kind of still a queen charge because there are three healers being used. Royal champion gets very deep into the base. Um, when you have a base that you know is very spread out, has a decentralized core like this, the royal champion can get in there and get some great value for you. Uh, and that's exactly what happened here. No single inferno to uh, rain on the parade or anything. Speaking of parades, we have a, um, a balloon parade uh, coming through here. Hooray! And uh, you can see that it's, you know, th this base cannot defend against this, especially with the stone slammer coming in. Tanking that scatter shot, very important. Uh, only a haste left. You know, big group of balloons, that's like two shots, it's done. But the uh, the scatter shot ta is tanked by the slammer for a while. And then finally um, out comes, I think, a lava hound and a couple balloons. But this is base is toast. Very nice attack. Um, uh, this is from the LP4 Hades War. Um, lots of Town Hall 13 attacks. A lot of Town Hall 13s in this war. So that's kind of what we're using here to show some attacks. Um, we'll take a look at one more of theirs, then switch over to a strategy we've been having a lot of success with. But um, this one I had to show, it was very interesting. Um, I would not think to do this because it seems like almost a waste of troop space, but it got the job done and you'll see what I mean here. Few balloons, then a few healers uh, with a skeleton spell. The skeletons pull the healers to start tanking the scatter shot, the world champion, um, searching for seeking air mines. Then out of the blimp comes the super wizards with the rage, and then just, you know, uh, invisibility spell after invisibility spell. And the critical thing, let me pause for just a sec, you'll notice that the wizards are inside that small little compartment, so they shoot back in here, getting the scatter shot and some other important defensive buildings, but also they can reach the town hall. So in this case, I guess it was worth it to invest quite a bit of troop space in order to get the blimp in that perfect location, that perfect drop point to take out both the town hall and um, other parts of the, uh, the compartments nearby. Uh, goes ahead and drops down the king as well to kind of start to clean up from uh, where, where the super wizards left off, which is always a great way to, to position things. Ice Golem, Queen, coming in here looking to get that single Inferno. Ice Golem does a great job tanking as it moves through here. The freeze uh, effect gets on that single Inferno, perfect, and um, just setting things up further here. You can see that the uh, Eagle is still up and ha has you know two Inferno Towers up, but um, the key here is the Town Hall is down, which always helps in a Lalo attack. When the Town Hall is down, it makes it so that uh, you don't have to use the Warden's ability over it, and you can use that Eternal Tome over a better spot. One thing that we saw in the last attack, and we're seeing again here, is the use of the Royal Champion uh, kind of coming behind the heroes and going directly into the base to just take out those 
big core defenses. Wasn't as successful here. Um, doesn't quite get that scatter shot down. The Royal Champion had some trouble with the single Inferno and the defensive Queen there. But still got some pretty good value. And um, that's a nice little technique is just sending the Royal Champion kind of directly into the base um, a few layers deep to really get those hard to reach defenses. Sounds like a cleaning commercial, um, hard to reach defenses, but it's true. The scatter shots, a lot of those buildings that are tough for your um, for your Lalo to deal with. It has to kind of use these freezes here on the scatter shot just because um, it's such an important building to get taken out. Uses like three freezes, but it's worth it. A couple balloons track over, get it taken out, and there's a ton of stuff left up. Nice use of the Ice Hound, as you may have seen a little earlier, to uh, get that freeze effect on the back end of the base. This one's GG. We will switch gears and take a look at two more Town Hall 13 attacks. Um, this time going over towards our side, starting uh, number one. So this strategy I really liked as soon as I started seeing it using the super minion with the dragons and they're kind of a nice little pair they complement each other pretty well uh, so to start off here a couple balloons big tesla farm pops i'm not sure if this was a fresh hit or not um it may have been the but i don't know for sure so uses that one technique where you drop down a couple lightning spells in like an earthquake just to kind of loosen things up, get some hit points taken down, and then drops down the Royal Champion with the Royal Champion's Tome, uh, takes out that part of the base. So it's a way to save spells. You know, you'd have to use like four uh, lightning spells and an earthquake otherwise to take out an Inferno. Actually, I think five lightning spells plus an earthquake at Town Hall 13. Um, this way, you only have to use like three of those spells and also you're able to um, get more defenses than you otherwise would with just the uh, the zap quake uh, strategy but this is the main show here comes the dragons the super minions have that extra range so they are a little bit more efficient than the dragons and um, they're not going to do much most of the tanking that's the dragon's job is to tank but they kind of stay behind get that consistent damage output and have that extra range to get things going early uh, very nice battle blimp getting the cover of the et eternal tome plus has the lava hound coming out and now it you know it kind of tanked an air defense that was kind of out of the picture at this point but uh, still soaking up some traps tanking the warden a little bit the pups tanked a few of those shots from the air defense and then here comes this just nice bat wave on the back end here has to be very careful that the uh, scatter shot doesn't retarget those bats right there as the dragons die. It was a good idea to make sure things were frozen. And of course, the scatter shot can't target things that are right on top of it. So they get the scatter taken down. That last wizard tower survives. But at this point, with the queen still alive, a couple dragons, the warden, and even a few super minions, this base is pretty much toast. So a nice, nice hit all around. Still has that queen's ability. Goes ahead and uses that right there. Um, good stuff to Tom. One more attack to take a look at. Same strategy here. I'm not sure if it was a bat wave though. We'll see. I f actually don't remember. I know it was using the uh, main push as dragons and super minions. But yeah, this one more heavily favoring those lightning spells. And a um, bit of a interesting base here with the eagle in the core like that. Goes ahead and just zaps down that entire compartment. Good value there just because there was a... Uh, a lot of defensive buildings kind of packed tightly together. A few balloons come in. I think they'll also get that archer tower taken down, which is good as well there because it's so low. Actually, it might not. I don't, I don't think it's going to get that drop off. Nope, it does not. A uh, few sneaky goblins. You know, one thing I wanted to say um, that I've noticed in my attacks is because you can bring two super troops now, Oftentimes, you can use the sneaky goblins when you previously couldn't. Maybe you need to use a super wall breaker, which took up you know your entire super troop budget back before the update. Now with that second super troop, you can use sneaky goblins, and they're often a much better funnel option. Instead of doing like a loon and a baby dragon, that's 15 troop space. Just three troop space or even six if you want to bring two for like a storage can create a very nice funnel anywhere on the outside of the base no matter what the defensive coverage is because they're invisible for those first few seconds so big fan of the sneaky goblins um, you can see here this is kind of an old-fashioned dragon attack almost um, that we used to see a, a ways back where you kind of send things in on a 
like an edge of the base, then you use the heroes to wrap around so everything kind of meets up rather than like a Town Hall 10 style straight up dragon attack. This is kind of more of a interesting variation we used to see more at Town Hall uh, 12 back I think when it was the top Town Hall level. So I, I'm a big fan of it. It keep the king and queen up a, a lot longer because they're not taking all that def uh, damage on the outside of the base since they're more in line with the dragons. So things just kind of wrap around. Um, the eagle went down, which is what was the important thing from the core. Super minion almost got that Tesla, not quite, but it did trigger a couple traps, which was good. And um, holding on to that royal champion still, here it comes. Once again, that deployment straight into the, the meat of the base there. Um, that's a great way to do it. Uh, she's going to trigger a ton of ground traps just because of uh, no ground troops have yet been inside the base. But um, just her ability alone takes out quite a bit. Went ahead and used it early to get the uh, damage and help start to, start to get things down for the benefit of the other troops still going. I might have waited a little bit personally and uh, used the ability later, but... Um, it ends up working out that single inferno is a bit scary there because it's going to just start taking out these remaining units but with the queen's ability as we go times two here uh, the warden tanks a little while then the queen's ability getting through that wall the archers doing their job tanking the single inferno not even too close at the end gets the job done nice attack there and that will conclude our video hope you enjoyed it uh, great Town Hall 13 action from this War 1 to show a couple highlights. And yeah, look to use some of these techniques and attack strategies in your own attacks. And um, one more thing, be sure to enter that creator boost code. I really appreciate it. And um, it helps me continue to put out content. Also, the Patreon info is above as well as we get near the end of the month. You can sign up and get uh, right away in on that next cycle of War Bases and other perks sent out each month. That's all from me. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you're having a, a good holiday season, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time. Bisectatron out.